good Thursday afternoon to you. Hope you are staying dry. Thanks for joining us on Sports for CLE. I'm Dave Bacon. Indians getting ready to open up series with the Kansas City Royals, trying to snap a nine-game losing streak. But we begin by talking Cleveland Browns football. Um, the, the contract situation with Baker Mayfield continues to be a hot topic around the NFL. So the question Emmanuel Acho has is, uh, should Baker Mayfield be concerned about the Browns' lack of commitment to him? He should be a little bit concerned. And he should be a little bit concerned because what me and Marcel has tried to do on this show is just talk real. And the realest mm. thing in life is that the market will always dictate your value. Okay. Relationally, occupationally, et cetera. There are a lot of contract disputes going <laughs> on in the world right now, the world of sports, athletically and on camera. And what you know about these uh, contract disputes going on in the world right now is very simple. You can only get as much money as somebody else is willing to pay. So if you think you're worth $40 million or you think you're worth $10 million, you better make sure somebody else willing to pay that $40 million mm, or you're not going to see it. You ain't going to cheat it. Now, Baker Mayfield, to the Browns, you are incredible. But when you look at how robust the market is elsewhere, that's when you might run into an issue. Because Lamar Jackson, for example, his market is fairly robust. Everybody knows Lamar Jackson is a balder. He is a unanimous MVP. Robust market. Josh Allen, his market probably even more so robust because Josh mm. Allen is on a skyrocketing type of trajectory. Mm. But Baker Mayfield, he's incredible too and for the Browns, but I don't know if the, the Denver Broncos or the Oakland Raiders or the Chicago Bears prior to the draft or the Miami Dolphins, I don't know if some of these teams are looking like, man, we got to have Baker Mayfield. Mm. And so as long as the market for Baker is not as robust, then he has to understand his pocketbook might not be as robust mm. when it comes time mm. for a contract mm. extension. Let's bring in the D-man, Dennis Maniloff from WTAM and 106.9. And uh, Emmanuel Acho makes a, a valid point, but I also think that if Baker has the another kind of year like he did last year, that market's going to be pretty robust. Yeah, Dave. First of all, I love uh, Acho, and I, I love uh, Marcellus Wiley. I, I watch that show as much as I possibly can. Two incredibly good analysts and uh, so, you know, what I'm about to say, I'm not trying to disagree with the show, but here's the thing. All it takes is one. When, when, when uh, Emmanuel talks about the robust market, all it takes is one. And that one team where Baker Mayfield is concerned is the Cleveland Browns. So if Baker Mayfield plays well in 2020, one, he is going to get paid handsomely by the Cleveland Browns. That's his market right there. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about other potential suitors if he takes care of his business this season on the field. Now, I will agree that, you know, uh, Lamar Jackson would probably be more attractive to other teams. Josh Allen would probably be more attractive to other teams. But in the case of those three guys, they, neither one of them needs to worry about any other team other than the team that has them right now. And the other thing is, is you know, as you go on and you have good years on top of each other, your, your value grows. I mean, uh, again, Baker Mayfield wasn't in the greatest of situations before last year. Yeah, and, and by the way, Dave, I apologize a little bit for the dog sound effects. It, it, uh, it's Browns coverage, man. The dogs are ready. Yeah, that's right. We got a, a veritable dog pound behind us here. Um, yeah, I mean, Mayfield, you would think, when you look at the, the, the three, the big three, the three kings of that 2020, 2018 draft class, uh, Mayfield probably has the most to prove in the eyes of the general public um, and probably in the eyes of the respective team. In other words, the Browns want to see a dynamic Mayfield, whereas I would think the Ravens are already convinced they have a dynamic Jackson or they've seen that. Uh, the Bills are already convinced they've seen uh, a dynamic, uh, um, you know, Josh Allen. But 
that doesn't mean anything really when it comes to the bottom line. Mayfield is going to be a very wealthy man as long as he delivers the goods on the field this year. And think about this too. Let's say that Baker Mayfield plays well within the, the you know the system and does everything he's told to do similar to 2020 and he he doesn't show this incredible uh, ability to transcend the game and and throw for 500 yards but the Browns win get into the playoffs and do damage in the playoffs he's still going to get paid you know what i mean like, he doesn't have to put up ridiculous individual numbers this year as long as he is a really good player contributing on a winning team. Yeah, a- absolutely. All right, so um, in league circles, Jeremy Fowler has a little bit of an update of what's going on with that Baker Mayfield contract talk. I just checked in with a source involved. I was told status quo, that there are no substantial talks going on right now. The Browns and a lot of the league are on vacation. It's a slow time in the league, but both sides remain open to discussing the possibility of a deal and seeing where it goes. Now, the Browns want to keep their core intact. They have a lot of good players that they've drafted and developed. They want to pay them. Get cornerback Denzel Ward, guard Wyatt Teller, running back Nick Chubb. It's uncertain if they can lock up all of those players, but last year when they gave Miles Garrett a mega deal, the thought was, hey, we like what we have on our roster. Let's try to keep it intact. The other thing about this, D-Man, you're not going to hear this, you know, this side offered this or this side countered. At some point in time, they're going to come out and say, hey, we got a deal done. Yeah, Dave, you and I at Sports for Clee have been way out ahead of this. We, we've been telling people how this is going to go down. The, the Browns, I mean, Mayfield, Allen, and Jackson are all looking at each other, or their reps are looking at each other. Who's going to go first? It's not a matter of, oh, well, the the uh, Mayfield camp is interested in extension, or Browns would like to sign. Of course, they all would like to sign. <laughs> you know, each of the three guys would like to sign big money deals. The teams would like their quarterback to stay and be paid well. The players would like to be there, but that's just not how it's going to go down yet because they have to figure out, all right, who's going to go first? And until they do that, until the first guy goes, then you know there's going to be a bit of a stalemate here. But if I'm Mayfield, I'm in no rush. I rebounded from 2019 and was really good uh, you know, in 2020. Why the heck can't I do it again? I was the number one overall pick, after all, for many reasons. So it's certainly within my capability, if I'm Mayfield, I'm thinking this, certainly within my capability of having another good year. Uh, same for Jackson, same for Allen. Uh, they're, they're not in any hurry. And where the Browns are concerned, though, we have talked about the, out, the, the other circumstances that the Browns have that the Ravens and Bills don't necessarily have. And by other circumstances, I guess you could boil it down to one name, and that's Nick Chubb. He is a different cat. He is a running back, the caliber of which the Ravens don't have, the Bills don't have. He's integrally attached to his team, this organization, and so, the Browns have to think about signing Chubb, whereas the Bills and the Ravens don't have to worry as much about signing their top running back. Yeah, and the, the other thing is, is I would expect um, one, if not all of these quarterbacks, I'm not saying they'll take a discount, but they will have the, the deal structured in a way that enables them uh, enables the team as much flexibility as possible so you can keep the pieces around the quarterback together as well. I mean, that's it, it's not taking less money. It's the way you, you divvy up the money. And, and um, I expect Baker Mayfield to probably do that in a, in a salary cap friendly way. All right, Bleacher Report lists um, the most overpaid players on each and every roster. 
Uh, they list oh, no. Odell Beckham Jr. as uh, the most overpaid on the Browns. I mean, you knew where that was going. Yeah. It, it, here's the problem right now with Odell. Whenever there's the word over that becomes, you know, that, that is an antecedent of sorts or, you know, becomes part of a word, it probably involves OBJ. Overpaid, overrated, overhyped. Uh, yeah, I would think o OBJ is the most overpaid Brown at this point, given that he just hasn't produced that much in a Browns uniform. Now, a lot of it is not his fault because of the injury situation. Um, but w where else are you going to tell me there is a player on the Browns who's making enough money to be overpaid relative to the NFL uh, citizenry? and hasn't produced. I mean, I, I don't think there's anywhere else on the roster where you can make that claim. So, yeah, at this stage, uh, Beckham has that dubious distinction. But you want to know uh, how much Odell Beckham Jr. would care if he was called the most overrated player on the Browns? Zero. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't affect anything. He's going to go out and, yeah. and, you know, try to prove everybody wrong. The D-Man, Dennis Maniloff, and I'm going to step aside to a quick time out. On the other side of the break, we're talking more about Baker Mayfield. We'll hear Dan Orlovsky and Mike Tannenbaum. Kind of opposing views. Sports for CLE. We'll be right back. Stay with us. For CLE continues, I'm Dave Bacon. and we continue talking Browns football. Mike Tannenbaum, former GM, keeps doubling down on uh, Baker Mayfield. Here's what he had to say this morning on Get Up. I would wait several years, and here's why. You are binding yourself to mediocrity. There's a lot of ways to evaluate the AFC quarterbacks, but at best, he's the sixth, maybe seventh best quarterback in the AFC. We could talk about Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Ryan Tannehill, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson. In my evaluations, he's the third best quarterback <laughs> in his own division. And I like Baker Mayfield. I worked him out before the 2018 draft. I was really surprised by how good his intangibles are. But we made the very same decision, Ryan, when we were at the New York Jets, which was we had a good quarterback in Chad Pennington. We chased a great quarterback in Brett Favre because we wanted to win a championship. If you're the Cleveland Browns, because of Baker Mayfield's physical limitations of him being short and slow, you can't win a championship, especially when you have the seventh or best quarterback right. in the AFC. All right. We'll hear from Dan Orlovsky in just a minute. Uh, D-Man? Let's go, baby! <laughs> I, I got... Chad Pennington? You, hey, Chad, Brett, how'd Jets. Brett Favre at the Jets work out for him? I've been waiting for this kind of sound bite the entire offseason. Hey, Bake Show, I want you to play that on a continuous loop 24-7, 365 from now until the Super Bowl. Oh, this is beautiful. This is exactly what Baker Mayfield wants. Hey, you know what? Tannenbaum, okay, great. He's done some things in the game. He's an executive. Okay, how in the world are you putting Joe Burrow and Carson Wentz ahead of the Bake Show? Carson Wentz, at this moment anyway, is a broken down jalopy. Okay, can he be fixed by Frank Reich in, in Indianapolis? Yes, he can. 
But at this moment, to have Carson Wentz ahead of the bake show? Joe Burrow. I love Joe Burrow. As Tannenbaum would say, oh, I love Baker Mayfield. I love Joe Burrow. But what has Joe Burrow done? Nothing, really. I mean, he, he got hurt, gruesome injury. He was on his way to a tremendous rookie season. But the bottom line is, he did get hurt. It was a serious leg injury. We need to see how Joe Burrow responds from a major injury before, or at least I do, before I put him ahead of uh, Baker Mayfield. And listen, is there any shame in being listed behind, uh, you know, Justin Herbert or Jackson or Allen? No. Or Mahomes or Brady or Rodgers? No. I mean, you can still be a heck of a quarterback in this league if you sit in the, oh, I don't know, 9, 10, 11, 12 range. You could still be really productive. You could be a winner. You could win a Super Bowl with a quarterback who's that good. So, uh, you know what? I'm glad Tannenbaum put that clip out there because that's that's what the Bake Show thrives on. Yeah, and, you know, Chad Pennington, most touchdowns he threw in a season was 23. Baker Mayfield has two seasons above that. Justin Herbert, who had the rookie record that he mentioned, broke Baker Mayfield's. And Chad Pennington twice has thrown one touchdown more than interceptions in a season. So I, it's, a, it's a terrible analogy. Um, we'll move on. You saw Dan Orlovsky getting ready to, to respond to that. Here's what Orlovsky had to say about Baker Mayfield. Baker's going to be better. <laughs> Baker Mayfield's going to throw for over 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, and less than 10 interceptions. They kept Rashad Higgins. I know that's not a household name. That's enormous. If OBJ can just fit in and be a piece, that is huge. Second year in an offense. First time he's ever had the same coaching staff from the previous season. I think of the second year Aaron Rodgers had under Matt LaFleur and how much better he got. I think of the second year that Ryan Tannehill had under this type of scheme, the second year that he got. I think of the second year that Jimmy Garoppolo had under Kyle Shanahan, the same scheme, and how much better he got. Baker Mayfield's going to have a better season than last year. And D-Man, if he does, that's uh, that's going to be really good things for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, and, and I, I like Dan Orlowski a lot. I think he does an excellent job, too, as, as an analyst. Uh, you know, we probably are underrating the value of continuity on a coaching staff. You know, as we sit here in the uh, unfortunately extended off season in the NFL, we wish they could play every weekend, but we're not the bot. We're not the ones putting our bodies on the line. But you know, we've talked about Mayfield coming back this year and all and all the things. You know, all the weapons that he has. Perhaps the most valuable weapon is the Stefanski Van Pelt offense. Because now, you know, Baker doesn't have to, he, he can do a lot more reacting than thinking. You know, it, it, it will now be natural to him as opposed to, okay, what am I supposed to do here? And Baker, we know, comes into things with a very high football IQ. But now you've added the familiarity to this of the system. You've added the comfort that he has. And now you're going to get a guy who is going to be making decisions presumably that much quicker than he was before because it's part of his uh, muscle memory. And that can only lead to more success, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree. And... Um... CBS Sports, an all under 25 team, and this one's kind of interesting. So the quarterback, Lamar Jackson, running back, Saquon Barkley, wide receivers, Justin Jefferson and DK Metcalf, left tackle, your Cleveland Browns, Jedrick Wills. Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, I love Jed Wills. I was all on board uh, with the Browns drafting him when I looked at the um, – potential tackles for the Browns to take in the draft uh, the other year. He was the one that stood out to me in large part because I 
listened to Joe Thomas, you know, the legendary Browns uh, future Hall of Fame tackle and now analyst. Um, you know, Joe Thomas was bullish on Jed Wills. So I said, well, if he's bullish on him, I can be too. And I had seen Wills play, you know, in Alabama, so uh, on TV. But the, why the heck not have uh, Jed Wills on that list? Because I think he's only scratched the surface on how, how good he can be. The D-Man, Dennis Maniloff, and I going to step aside, take a quick time out. Uh, when we return, one potential first-time pro bowler from the Browns will tell you who NFL.com thinks and something you got to see with Donovan Peoples-Jones, uh, Browns wide receiver. Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. Better days are ahead. Be ready with the training you'll need to get a great job. If you or your family has experienced financial hardship as a result of COVID-19, try seeking help with full tuition assistance. Whether you want to improve your skills, get certified, or train for a new career, go to try-c.edu to check out our programs and resources. So what are you waiting for? Register now for online and on-campus summer classes. Try-C is where futures begin. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. COVID-19 has changed how we show up and show out with our family. Now it's time to take the first step that lets us get back to talking smack with the side of mac and cheese. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts. As COVID-19 vaccines become available, you may have questions. Should I get it? Is it safe? Should I wait? It's smart to question. Now, get the facts at getvaccineanswers.org so you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. Sports for CLE continues. We continue talking Browns football. Well, a lot of people think it's going to be a big year for Donovan Peoples-Jones, a wide receiver uh, for the Browns' second year, uh, was a late-round pick. He did pretty well as a rookie, and people are expecting him to do even better. Um, some interesting things is uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones showing off a little bit of athleticism here. Let's bring back in the D-man. Uh, pretty good vertical there. Uh, you know, get on top of the car for better cell phone reception. I like it. Hey, I, I got a new name for the uh, Cleveland Browns. You know, the Indians are going to be changing their name in case you hadn't heard, Dave. <laughs> the Browns might want to change their name to the Cleveland Ninjas. I mean, we got guys uh, jumping on boxes, slamming balls down, and uh, you know, slam dunking, jumping on cars. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Um, that's, yeah. that's good for Donovan Peoples-Jones, but I would say back off a little bit on the uh, th that kind of stuff and, and show me uh, even more than you showed me last year on the football field. That's still pretty impressive, uh, the, 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 the jump there from no running start. All right, pro football focus. Um, receivers that are primed for bigger roles in 2021. Uh, Debo Samuels, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, a couple of first-round picks. And for the Browns, the aforementioned Donovan Peoples-Jones. Yeah, you know, that that's interesting because if Odell is back and healthy, he's going to get his touches just by virtue of his talent. You know Jarvis is going to get his because he's so good. Uh, I like Hollywood Higgins a lot. And so does Baker. So he's going to get his. On the tight end side, Hoop 
should be should have a little more of a role, I would think. Njoku can be a factor. And you still got to take care of the boys behind you if you're Mayfield in uh, Chubb and Hunt. So there's only one ball. There's only so many offensive snaps. So I wonder how many opportunities Peoples Jones is actually going to get in order to have that possibility of, of an increased role. But I, I like where pro football focus's mind is because Peoples Jones was somebody that I really liked. Unfortunately, he played for Michigan, but I enjoyed watching him, and I thought he was incredibly underutilized at Michigan, and that's why he was able to drop to where he did, where the Browns were able to steal him late in the draft. So he's definitely going to be somebody worth watching, but I do wonder if everybody ahead of him on the skill position pecking order is healthy, I wonder how many opportunities he's actually going to get. Uh, the one thing that, you know, he, he does have a bigger, you know, he's a bigger target. So that might be, you know, the thinking. You, you can match him up some. Again, um, you're right. There, there are a lot. Those are good problems to have. Offensive coordinators, you want too many mouths to feed as opposed to, boy, who are we going to get the ball to? So top 10 cornerbacks, um, and this is from an ESPN article, and it's based on front office uh, executives and scouts ranking the top 10 cornerbacks. Number one, Jalen Ramsey from the Rams. Marlon Humphrey from the Ravens is two. Zaven Howard, Dolphins, three. Stephon Gilmore from the Patriots, who might be available, is four. Denzel Ward from the Browns, ranked eighth. Uh, and again, that's by front office executive, GM, scout types. So uh, ranked eighth best cornerback in the league. You know, I'll buy that, Dave, as long as Denzel Ward plays at least 15 games this upcoming season because it is a 17-game season. With with veterans, and by veterans, I mean guys who are at least two years in <laughs> because in the NFL, not for long, uh, a veteran uh, clock starts ticking pretty much at, right after the rookie uh, year is over. So... Uh, with 17 games, I'm factoring in for a veteran at least one game sitting out, you know, just trying to rest guys and make sure that they don't overextend and, and play all 17 and, and, and get themselves vulnerable for injury. So if, if, my, if my ceiling is 16 for a guy with Denzel Ward's experience level, I got to see at least 15 out of him. If he plays... 15 games in a 17 game season he's a top 10 cornerback in the nfl this is a guy who when he's healthy is really really good he, he's not going to be bad when he's out there playing healthy so i you know I'll, I'll buy that i don't know about uh was it humphrey number two yeah and no, i give me gilmore and howard over humphrey for sure behind uh, Ramsey. Yeah, and, and I, to your point, you know, Denzel Ward, the, they got to find a way to, to keep him healthy um, and, and on the field. All right, uh, before we take a break, Bleacher Report has one player poised from each position uh, to become a star. So poised for stardom this year, quarterback Joe Burrow, running back Cam Akers, wide receiver C.D. Lamb, Safety, John Johnson the third, the uh, the free agent signing of the Browns. Yeah, that that's music to the ears of, of Browns fans because you know we we have been waiting for so long to see impact players on the defensive side. We finally got to see one in Miles Garrett. You know, he comes on the scene and has all the make, you know, looks like a number one overall pick. Of course, he, he's been danged with some injuries, and he had the, you know, the incident with my, Mason Rudolph, and he had COVID. So it hasn't been a clean sheet for Miles since he came in the NFL. But he's the type of player that the Browns defense has lacked for the most part for years and years and years. The game record. Well, now you have a chance with John Johnson the third in the deep secondary to have one of those guys. You know, you, you think of uh, 
well, I, I date myself here, but the heat-seeking missile, Chuck Cecil, you know, a Palomalu type, you know, those guys that just fly around the field, smash into people, make plays. And, and Johnson, we know, is a, is a smart guy, too. He's not just reckless on the field. I, and I'm not saying any of these guys are reckless. I just, I'm just, i just saying I want playmakers. We all want playmakers. The Browns' defense hasn't produced enough of them, but now all of a sudden you've got Miles. You have the potential for a, a game wrecker in Clowney. You have JOK coming in by the draft, who could do that too, in my opinion. Uh, maybe he doesn't do it right away day one, but he could eventually be a uh, you know a sideline to sideline uh, menace to the other team. Johnson the third comes in, and so all of a sudden your defense has guys that you can look to to make plays. Yeah, I would agree. And, and Browns fans, you'll know John Johnson is doing his thing and doing it well if tight ends do not destroy our defense like they have for the last several years. That's the thing John Johnson should eliminate is tight ends getting 10 catches for 150 yards against the Browns. All right, D-Man, we're going to take one more break. On the other side of the break, we'll hear from Colin Coward talking about the Browns' win total. Does he go over or under? Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. At Social Security, we are always thinking of ways to save you time and make things easier. That's why we created My Social Security. A My Social Security account allows you to access your earnings history and benefits information, request a replacement Social Security card, get a proof of income letter, estimate and apply for benefits, and more. Save time. Go online. Open a My Social Security account at ssa.gov slash my account. Social Security. Securing today and tomorrow. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Sports for CLE continues. We continue talking Browns football. Colin Coward talked about the AFC North win totals. Browns win total for Vegas, 10 and a half. Here's what he thought on the Browns win total being 10 and a half. Cleveland and Baltimore are both at 10 and a half wins. And I think that number is about right. Um, early numbers on the Browns were nine and a half. And I think they feel like a, a, a 10 or an 11 win team. Uh, similar to Baltimore, um, we've added a game in the NFL. So 11 wins now um, is formerly 10 wins. So I, I think Baltimore and Cleveland at 11 and 6, the number feels right. They'll split the games they face one another. Um, and I feel pretty solidly about both. I think they're two of the top four teams, maybe top five teams in the AFC at Buffalo, Kansas City. <laughs> hey, Dave, I love Colin Coward. What, was this like uh, breakfast with Colin or something? <laughs> Pre-workout chat with Colin? I mean, he looks a whole lot different there than he does on uh, Fox on TV, doesn't he? Yeah, you know, he, he sounds a little bit better, a little bit more mellow, wasn't screaming, you know. Yeah, he doesn't look like – again, I love – to, to loosely be like Tannenbaum, 
I love Colin Coward. I do. But he, it's just very interesting how different he is there and how mellow he is. I was half expecting him to say, uh, you know what, Baker Mayfield is my favorite quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> um, but, yeah, a ten and a half. The Vegas knows what it's doing for the most part. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. <laughs> you know, um, ten and a half feels right to me, too. When you and I played the schedule game, Dave, when it came out, I had the Browns at 11 and 6. So I have them <laughs> a half a game over ten and a half. I could see 10 and 7, uh, 11 and 6, 12 and 5 maybe is the ceiling, I believe, for this team because there are difficult games and you still have to beat the Ravens. You got to beat the Steelers. Um, so and you have the chiefs to open up. You could easily be Owen one and the house is falling. You know, everybody's the sky's falling. Everybody's going to be like, Oh no, you know, the end is near for the Browns in 2021, just because of one game out of the shoot when you're playing the great Patrick Mahomes and the chiefs. But I think the, the Browns will be fine. I do think they'll lose that first game, but after that, they'll be fine and um, settle in somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 to 12 wins. Uh, you'll find this one interesting. So CBS Sports HQ, Micah Roberts and Zach Samini uh, say that Vegas, not a big fan uh, of the Browns this year. Here's why. Talking the NFL and the most striking line moves that we've seen, anything, futures, Week one, Zach, what have you seen? Well, with the Cleveland Browns win total, it's went from nine and a half to ten and a half. Everybody's loving the Browns as far as the futures market, but I think there's some red flags there. Last year, they were the only postseason team that gave up more points than they scored. And then you look at their schedule last year was much more softer. They swept the NFC East. That was a big factor in them winning 11 games. But this year, they're going to have to face the NFC North. It's going to be much more difficult for them to, to get that sweep there. And then the added game for the 17-game season this year is against the Arizona Cardinals. So I don't like that line move there. I'm not going to go with the public. Yeah, I was talking with William Hills, Nick Bogdanovich, the top bookmaker over there. He told me they're going to lose seven figures if the Cleveland Browns win the Super Bowl. And that's because they started at 22 to 1 odds. They're down to 16 to 1. He said they lose on everything Browns, including the week one matchup. Uh, they also, to win the AFC North and also the AFC, they are the worst beat for the book right now. Nobody in Las Vegas or the books all around the country are rooting for the Cleveland Browns this season. <laughs> Boy, those two guys really intimidate me, Dave. I mean, the NFC North. I know. We haven't noticed. That's a juggernaut of a division, <laughs> isn't it? Listen, if the Browns lose to the Chicago Bears in the first month of the season, then we can shut down Lou Groza Boulevard because it's over. <laughs> There's no way the Browns are going anywhere if they lose to that iteration of the Chicago Bears. The Detroit Lions, in case you haven't noticed, are dog crap, all right? The Minnesota Vikings, yeah, they're good, but that's also the Stefanski Bowl. You think he's not going to have the boys revved up and ready to go to beat uh, his former team? And the Packers, we don't know if Aaron Rodgers is even going to play for them. So I'm not in awe of the mighty NFC North. And another thing he was throwing in was, uh, the one guy was throwing in, the Arizona Cardinals. Like, they're a juggernaut. Not yet. I mean, they could be good. They've got a lot of really significant additions but it remains to be seen whether the Arizona Cardinals are going to be any good so uh, do I think the Browns deserve unending hype and rose petals thrown at their feet and guarantees they're going to go deep into the playoffs no they haven't earned that right yet but to be dogging them on account of the fact that this year they're playing the NFC North. I mean, come on. And the, mean, the other thing was mentioning the defense. Last year's defense yeah. and this year's defense are going to have two or three starters that are the same, and that's it. <laughs> right. And, but here's the thing. In fairness to those two guys, Browns have proven to do. 
I mean, they have to show that all the new pieces fit. Fair is fair. They have to show that all these uh, new toys that uh, Woods is getting are going to fit. They're going to stay healthy. They're going to, uh, you know, have a cohesive unit. But, yeah, to judge this year's team on last year last year's defense is erroneous to me. Yeah, I would agree. And last thing before we go. NFL.com, one potential pro bowler, new pro bowler from each team. For the Browns, they say right guard Wyatt Teller. Honorable mention, Baker Mayfield and John Johnson. You know, I, I'm not going to argue because I love Wyatt Teller, and he's a monster. He's a mauler. Um, you know, if he stays healthy, he'll, he'll destroy people. Um, but the guy that I want to see – on the Browns, break that Pro Bowl ceiling, of course, is the Big Show. Because if Baker Mayfield is a Pro Bowler, then Tannenbaum is in a hole somewhere, and uh, the Browns are rolling. So I, I want to see Baker more than I would want to see Teller as a Pro Bowler. The D-man, Dennis Maniloff uh, from WTAM 1100, 106.9. Getting ready to do some Indians pre- and post-game, Dennis? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's slim pickings in, cl in the uh, progressive field these days. All right, uh, remember, you can listen to them, Indians pre and post, WTAM, 1100 AM, 106.9 FM. As always, Dennis, appreciate the time and the insight. Thanks very much. Thank you, man. All right, the D-man, Dennis Manloff. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out. On the other side of the break, Matt Derry from 92.3 The Fan will join us. We'll talk some Indians. We'll talk some Browns. Sports for CLE. We'll be right back. Life is starting to get back on track, and you can too. If you or your family have experienced financial hardship as a result of COVID-19, try Seek and Help with full tuition assistance. Safely get the in-demand degree or training you need with online and on-campus classes. Go to tryc-edu to check out our programs and resources. So what are you waiting for? Register now for summer classes. Tri-C is where futures begin. As the COVID-19 vaccines become available, you might be asking yourself, should I get it? And if I do, will I be able to go about life without putting my family at risk? You've got questions and that's normal. The fact is the vaccines are safe and effective. They're going to save lives. To get the latest on the COVID-19 vaccines, visit GetVaccineAnswers.org because getting back to the moments we miss starts with getting informed. It's up to you. CLE continues. I'm Dave Bacon. Let's welcome in Matt Derry from 92.3 The Fan. Uh, Matt, we're going to play a little AFC North bingo here. So you get to choose one guy at each position, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, can only use one from each of the four teams in the division. So let's take a look. Um, I went with Joe Burrow, Nick Chubb, Juju Smith-Schuster, Mark Andrews. What are you? Who are you going with? You went with Joe Bur You went with Joe Burrow. I went with Joe Burrow. I, you you got to use one of the. You got to use one of the Bengals. Oh, you have to use. Oh, I thought you could just use one of whatever team you wanted. You would yeah, use one of each team it. and one at, at each position. Well, I mean, I will say this. I think the argument for that there would be a tough call between Hollywood Brown and Odell Beckham. Don't you think that was the most <laughs> difficult call? I, yeah, yeah. 
Who who are you going with? Is I, your, who you who are you taking there? Well, I mean, I when when I got when I got the prep sheet uh, before the show, you know, heavy duty uh, show prep here, Dave. <laughs> I I didn't know. I thought you could go with any with anybody you wanted, uh, as long as it wasn't the same, you know, just the same team every time. I mean, to me, Lamar Jackson would be the quarterback. All right. Nick Chubb would be the Nick Chubb would be the running back. Um, I would have said Hollywood Brown and Mark and Mark Andrews. But I, but I also, if you're going by team, yeah, I mean, I guess I would have to pick Burrow because, look, the one lock on that list belongs to us, yep. and that's Chubb. So that's the big, that's the best news. I think you could make a case for 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 uh, 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 Hooper versus Andrews, you know. But but um, to me, the best player on that list to me is Nick Chubb, and uh, I know we've had some arguments on the fan about top five running backs and and, and certain people saying that. You know, Damian Tomlinson, that having Chubb in his top five. No, Nick Chubb is is right there. And to be quite honest, I may take Kareem Hunt over any of the other running backs on that list. Yeah, that's fair enough. All right, this is this is kind of interesting too. All right, so four new jerseys you will rush out to buy before October. So new guys <laughs> uh, with the Browns. We've got Jacob Phillips, number fifty. Greg Newsom, number twenty. Jadavian Clowney, ninety. And Anthony Schwartz, 10. All even numbers. Wh- which one do you think becomes uh, the most popular by October of those? Um, I think right now it's chic to say Clowney because everybody knows who he is and it's kind of cool. But I don't know if this is going to be a one-year thing. Jadevian Clowney hasn't stayed anywhere in a while. He seems to, to be wanting to bounce around. But let's hope he has a good year and cashes in uh, with the Browns. But uh, I would probably say Greg Newsom. I, I think there's a reason why this, this guy was a first-round pick, uh, a much-needed guy on an island that can play cornerback. I'm not calling him the next Joe Hayden yet. But I think that would be the guy that, uh, that, that I think you'll see some Newsom jerseys. Plus, he's got a good last name, right? Yeah, there, there is some history there. You know, I, I would say if Clowney, well, if Clowney stays healthy, he's the type of guy that, that Cleveland will fall in love with. As is yes. as is Greg Newsom. I think Newsom is probably a guy that the Browns think they're going to build around for a long time. I do too. Uh, and Phillips is a good football player, but let's be honest, I wasn't. My socks weren't knocked off last year. I mean, he's a third round pick. Uh, sometimes these LSU guys need a couple of years because the, you know the you know at LSU they just they run around. I mean, they they just use their athleticism. System football, NFL is a little bit different. I think Phillips will be a good player this year. Uh, but nobody last year playing linebacker did all that much for me uh, consistently a year ago. Yeah, and there were there were games where it was like, boy, this guy's really good. And then there were plays right. where it's like, ooh, that didn't work out well. And, you know, that brings us to our next topic. So um, uh, the Athletic had a breakout candidate for each and every team, and the Browns' breakout candidate was Jacob Phillips. How about that? Well, it's a young defense, and it got even younger. Um, I, you know, I, I really think John Johnson being back there and on the back end, and then if they're healthy up front, the linebackers and a guy like Phillips will be much better. Um, let you know, I, I like what what, what uh, D Man said before the break. And Dennis, by the way, was in rare form uh, with the screaming. There's no nobody screams like Dennis Manilov. Maybe Bruce Trennan, but I'm not, I'm not, I, I digress. I think that uh, uh, John Johnson could be a breakout guy, but as Dennis kind of said, what about it? What if Baker Mayfield breaks out? And what if there's no debate after this year that Baker Mayfield is a top 10 quarterback, no debate. And that he gets his contract and boom, he's the star. Cause I don't think people are saying he's a star yet. No. And you're, you're absolutely right. That could very well happen. Matt Derry from 92.3 yeah. The Fan and the Derry Brothers Tribecast. Now I'm going to step aside, take a quick time out. On the other side of the break, we turn our attention to the Indians and the Cavs. Indians getting ready to open up the final homestand before the All-Star break against the Royals. We'll talk about that. Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. Better days are ahead. Be ready with the training you'll need to get a great job. If you or your family has experienced financial hardship as a result of COVID-19, try seeking help with full tuition assistance. Whether you want to improve your skills, get certified, or train for a new career, go to tri-c.edu to check out our programs and resources. So what are you waiting for? 
Register now for online and on-campus summer classes. Tri-C is where futures begin. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. First, they said cigarettes were safe. We know how that turned out. Now, they say they didn't market e-cigarettes to teens? Fact, more than one in four high school students are vaping, and 80% say their first e-cigarette was flavored. Vaping is harmful to developing brains. The reason we think vaping is safe? Marketing. Same lies, different day. Tell Big Vape to quit lying. Welcome back to Sports for CLE. We change our focus a little bit to the Indians tribe, getting ready to open up a series against the Kansas City Royals, and they are trying to snap a nine-game losing streak, longest in the Terry Francona era um, managing the Indians. And, um, Matt, it's uh, Zach Plesek uh, on a pitch count. Probably 60 pitches will be the limit, uh, taking on Duffy, uh, who is – Two starts removed from being on the disabled list as well. Um, but the fact that, that the Indians are putting Zach Plesek with a 60 pitch count shows you just where uh, this rotation is. They, they just they don't have the horses right now. No, they don't, uh, Dave. This has been very disappointing, to be quite honest. We've we bragged for so many years about how this team will always have depth when it comes to starting pitching. The pitching factory. Uh, Ruben Niebla, Carl Willis, uh, the people down in the minor leagues, the analytics, and none, I repeat, none of the young guys that have come up have wowed me at all. Uh, Eli Morgan I like, but Eli Morgan is, is, is really going to have to be, he doesn't have the high rising, uh, high octane fastball to get a lot of big leaguers out there are going to be solo home runs. I think Eli Morgan is more of a four or a five guy down the road i like him he's young uh his first start was on a windstorm and, and rainstorm so it wasn't fair to him uh tristan mckenzie's been a huge disappointment um sam Hentges the same maybe he's a reliever uh jc mejia got sent down today he couldn't you know when when the going gets tough with jc and he puts runners on because he's got the stuff he just can't get big league hitters out pitching from the stretch it's a problem and you'd figure one or two of those guys would at least give you four or five innings a start, and we could weather this storm, and it just does not happen. No, and, and you know, they've, they've tried everything. Uh, bad situation. They tried it, and, and uh, it didn't work. I, I think the one thing that's working against Mejia and Morgan and, and Hentges, they didn't have a minor league season last year. Don't forget that. That's no, There's right. a right. lot of that finishing, and, and you know, the Indians are really good at understanding when a guy's ready, and, and I don't think they planned on having any of those guys in the situations they've been in. And, you know, what are you going to do when all five of your starters, you know, well, go down? Well, and, and the other thing, too, is, Dave, you know, Logan Allen pitched so well in the spring, yep. and they thought he was ready, and he's been a disaster. So it's not like, okay, Logan Allen, every other start's giving you five or six, and he's, He's ham and egging it through. He can't get anybody out. Yeah. <laughs> like they've sent him up and down four times. Tristan McKenzie, they announced today, is coming back up to pitch yep. tomorrow. Which Tristan McKenzie are we going to get? Are we going to get sticks with seven Ks and maybe get you through five or six and a few walks? But we're seeing that, that, that ni mid-90s fastball and the, and, and the wipeout breaking pitches. Or are we going to see the guy that walks the ballpark and we sit here and go, well, we're going to have to send him back down again for more. For more work on on his yeah. on his arm, it's it's you'd figure one of these guys, somebody would step up. Me personally, I I like what Cal Quantrill is doing. I see something there, but he's 25, 26. He's not as young as these guys, and, and Cal's going to stay in the rotation regardless. They need him. He's got a little bit more seasoning, a little bit more tread on his tires. But 
is definitely disappointing. And it also doesn't help too, David, when the bats are, are ice cold again. Yep. And you're t- and these guys are squeezing the baseball even harder, knowing they can't make a mistake. Yep. Qu- Quattro pitched his ass off Sunday, and pitched well and went six, and he, he gave up three, but you know, they just couldn't get any help in the offense. You know, yeah, it was yesterday one of the doubleheaders, second and third, nobody out, can't get the runner home. You know, come on. I mean, Bradley Zimmer, why is he on this team? There, there, there's, there's, there's not just holes in the in the staff. There's some holes out in the oh, field. Yeah, too. without question. And, and the problem is, is you know, help is, you know, it's probably high A. You know, it's it's a couple years away. And, and it doesn't make sense to trade pieces off because your pitching at the front end is not dominant enough to go deep into the playoffs with this offense. No, no but I'll say this. I think that the help is going to be the Cavalry's coming, but you're right. Some of those guys we could see next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nolan Jones, yep. Tyler Freeman. If, he, if Tyler Freeman can get healthy at Akron and continue his pace. Oscar Gonzalez all of a sudden is a name to watch. Yep. 23-year-old free swinger that has a little bit of Harold Ramirez in him, but much more power. Um, so some guys are coming, but unfortunately we're seeing, right, like what you said, uh, middling starting pitching prospects that w- they thought they could develop that have not turned out yet. And again, they're very young. I think Sam Hentges is going to be a lights out left-handed reliever. I don't think he's going to be a starter. Uh, I- I'm very hopeful that JC Mejia with experience could be a three or a four, but you know, the higher end guys, it's going to be a, like you said, it, it's going to be a little bit of a, of a while. And, uh, you know, the Tyler Freemans, uh, George Valera, Rokio, guys like that. Um, you know, Nolan Jones, hopefully. But, man, how disappointing is it to watch Daniel Johnson play? Bradley Zimmer, who we thought for years would be something. Owen Miller comes up and cannot hit a breaking ball. Uh, it's, it's definitely disappointing. The one guy that's, that's been good and that has come up and, and, and really shown something is Bobby Bradley. He's been, he's been pretty good. Yeah. All right, we're going to shift our attention a little bit. Um, before I let you go, let's talk a little bit about Cavs. Uh, Mobley versus Suggs. What are you thinking, and, and who do you like? Well, I've talked to a number of people, Dave, about the draft, and it sounds like Detroit's going to do the right thing and take Cade Cunningham one. I think they are considering Jalen Green because of just how athletic he is and the fact that he could drop 30 next year a night uh, at the two-guard spot. I don't think he'll be there for the Cavs at three. I think he'll be in Houston. So like you said, that would leave uh, Evan Mobley, the big man from USC, or Jalen Suggs, the do-everything, you know, highlight reel, uh, you know, star of the Final Four with Gonzaga hit the game-winning shot uh, in the Final Four game, uh, guard from, you know, from the Zags. And, and the more I think about it, to me, if you're going to pass on a guy that can really do everything with a basketball like Jalen Suggs, to take a big man that only shoots 30% from three, yeah, he was Pac-12 player of the year. Yes, he can block shots. People comparing him to Chris Bosh. But if I'm the Cavs, I know they got a lot of guards and everything else. But you got to – I wouldn't be passing up Jalen Suggs to take a big man that I have questions about his offensive game. Yeah, you've got enough guys that are offensively challenged that you're kind of thinking are going to be a part of it in Okoro and – and even to some extent, Jared Allen. Um, so you right, need you right. need offense if you are the Cavs. And the game has changed, uh, Dave. Let's say you draft uh, uh, Mobley. Is Jared Allen going to stay, or are you gonna, if or are you going to let him walk as a restricted free agent? Then that then that that the trade you made in the middle of the season netted you pretty much nothing. Uh, the Cavs already botched the whole Drummond situation by even allowing him in town and even allowing him to poison the locker room. That was a disaster. But thank goodness he's gone. Um, but if you have Jared Allen on the floor with, with Mobley, that doesn't work anymore. The NBA's changed. You have one big guy and four smalls around him with you know shooting, shooting threes. And like you mentioned, Okoro, a very good defensive player, still has a lot of work to do on his offensive game. So... If I'm the Cavs and Suggs is there at three, I'm considering that. And I'm also looking at Kaminga from the G League as a possibility, too. All right, Matt Derry, 92.3 The Fan, and the Derry Brothers Tribecast, as always. Appreciate the time and the insight. Thanks very much, Matt. Thank you, Dave. All right.
Matt Derry from 92.3 The Fan and the Derry Brothers Trapcast. That'll do it for this edition of Sports for CLE. Scheduled guests tomorrow, Doug Lamarice and Tim Bielek from The Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow at 4 right here on Sports for CLE.